The Secret Histories, or better known as the Cultist Simulator Expanded Multimedia Super Franchise, is a series done by The Weather Factory, and it wasn't long before their hit game and super cool idea would be actually converted into a tabletop RPG. Secret cults, secret mysteries, and maybe even perhaps some secret histories. Well, this should make a perfect game, and you would be correct. However, the officially produced RPG is odd. You have probably never actually heard of the Secret Histories RPG, because it doesn't actually exist, as it's being sold in a bundle dubbed The Lady Afterwards, which is a combination of rulebook and a massive adventure path set in Alexandria. Reading through the adventure, I can accurately say I'm like 80% sure it might be okay, because I'm gonna come clean, I'm I'm not actually a big fan of Cultist Simulator. Nothing really grabbed me about it after the first few runs. Kind of got bored of the core loop of the gameplay, so when the RPG came out, it seemed like a perfect fit for me to jump in to, right? Wrong. Wrong on all accounts. The Secret Histories is a custom design game coming from the Weather Factory, and I can best describe it as a poor man's Call of Cthulhu mixed with a horrifying abomination of fucking PBTA. It's a percentile system with a standard assortment of notes and problems associated with it, however, where does that PBTA PBTA aspect come in. Well, the Secret Histories actually has you pick from eight distinct characters. These are not classes, these are distinct entities as they have their own set of skills and attributes ranked out of 100. Your initial attributes are already chosen for you, each of these characters. For example, a detective has a physique of 60, dexterity of 50, intelligence of 70, and a determination of 30. This cannot change initially. Skill-wise, the characters have 400 points to distribute, but this is where things start going a little bit wiggly wonky. You have pre-assigned skills and specialties to each character. That 400 points aren't really 400, as the detective has a raw 60 in handyman shooting and tracking. The game never really points this out as something to note, so either every character has 400 points to distribute with 180 three points due to their character they chose, or secretly only have 220 due to 180 already being distributed. The issue I'm trying to point out here more than anything is that the characters aren't really yours, and more evident by the characters having connections to people in the actual adventure path, which play a rather pivotal role in the story should they arrive. But I can forgive it, Cultist Simulator has a pretty extensive system on the back end, right? Come on, give me some magic, give me some of that Cultist Simness. Well, first off, you're not actually playing cultist simulator. Far from it, in fact, you're playing a bunch of strangers in this game. Secondly, there isn't really a hint of magical happenings in this game outside using brighter night arts, which is more of an afterthought in about three paragraphs. Most of the cultist simulator weirdness isn't actually present in this game in any remote capacity, as the adventure focuses on a very particular aspect of it in its own little corner. See, the major influences of the secret histories even is the use of the regard, which is a collection of godlike entities that you are already know because these are the hours. You assort three of them in a row and assign them a set of dice from D4 to D20, representing how impactful they are to the current idea. When you need some help or getting desperate, you can draw upon them and sub out that die for one of your D100 dice, so a D4 can be subbed out for your tens place die. You could argue that the fascination and dread mechanic have some impact, but it feels surface level at best. A sanity meter without really telling me it's a sanity meter, but it's more in line with the injury mechanic, which has you make a series of injury checks rather than having a strict health system, which often results in a race to get down, which ironically makes dying rather long experience. There's something odd with this game. It's a fan game, clearly designed for the fans of the Cultist Simulator Multimedia Expanded Super Franchise, but it also doesn't go too deep into its own nitty grittiness when it really should. However, they don't even introduce to anything for people who have no idea what's going on. Please, game, tell me what the door in the eye actually is without me having to consult the fucking wiki. The game feels confused. More of a fluff piece to say that, hey, we made a game, look at our new expanded franchise, rather than anything of substantial flavor. Hell, the pieces are there, just give me something to work with. I came into this game wanting to learn more, and I left it being more annoyed than anything. Unless this was solely designed to sell the $150 box set or the $35 PDF bundle of a of a 30-page book. My name is Nopad Anon, and this was The Secret Histories or The Lady Afterwards. If you like what I do here, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And a th many thanks to the plutocrats who continue to fund my extravagant needs. I will see you all next time.